Today, me and Caden are on a adventure to see if we can make clear tails for Garanda. We're gonna figure this out. I've watched some videos on how to do this. We're here at Home Depot. And we're gonna see if we can find clear acrylic that's not textured. That way we can make our own clear legs. Oh, it was this. Clear acrylic. This has, a, this has a sheet over it and then it's full clear. Oops, oops. So we have gone and got the supplies. We have our acrylic clear, acrylic. We got four sheets just in case you make a mistake. I bought a full set of extra tail lights for, to do this. <clears throat> I have a clip somewhere in my camera. I'll see if I can find it inserted here of when I grab these. It's from some dude in random Salt Lake and he had like five, four or five SFs. Yeah, Kate, yeah. Kate is the one who found it for me. The dude had like four or five SFs in his backyard just torn apart and I bought these taillights off of him. I am in an SF5 or Forester Graveyard <laughs> right now trying to take taillights. Goodness. But <clears throat> what Caden's doing, I already took apart one of the taillights months ago because I was trying to figure out how to do to make clear tails because you can't, no one's ever done it. That worked good. Hayden, you are a genius. So this part right here, so this was chrome, and then this was like plain silver and not shiny, and it was gonna look weird with the acrylic. And this head, this tail light broke right there. I accidentally broke it. So we're just gonna use one of the ones off of my Forester because this is one of the extra ones we bought. But Caden said that he saw places where they paint it black first and then chrome paint it and it pops more. And 100% that just worked. But the reason we're doing this is one, because it's gonna be cool and two, there's not a single SF5 that I know about in the entire world that has clear tail lights because nobody makes them and it is very hard to make clear tail lights, which is why we're doing this. So actually the stock Forester tail lights are not siliconed together. They're actually plastic welded together. You can't heat them and then pull them apart. You actually have to cut them. Not gonna litter. What we've done is we went and bought a Dremel. Well, I went and brought a Dremel and we're gonna use it to right here. We're gonna use this Dremel to very carefully cut off the lens. And then we're gonna use the clear acrylic in the heat gun to form a new lens that we're making ourselves to this and then silicone it shut. Hopefully that'll work. Caden's very confident. I'm very confident, yeah, we'll get it done today. He's very confident that we'll get it done today. And I am like half and half that this will even work. So I guess we'll find out, stay tuned. worked honestly pretty well with the Dremel. It cut it all off in one piece and then we just used the flathead to kind of, kind of pop it off. But it worked very well. But if this is what we were talking about, because this is the one you painted, right? Yep. Yeah, see how that's chrome? You mean this is like plain silver? That's why we're chrome painting because you want it all chrome. What we'll do is we'll sand down the edges where we cut Make sure it's all good, and that's when we'll form the acrylic, but we gotta paint them first, so. Mm -hmm. uh, we can sand it first, and then paint, and uh, make it easier. Plus, we gotta take out the harnesses, too. Oh yeah, the light harness. I forgot to take that out. Yep, we're painting it. Yeah, Daxon showed up. What's up, bro? Yeah, if you... Okay, the beginning of every single part of the rebuild series has been me and you waving in front of the drone. I don't think anyone's realized who that is. I know you realized, but that's him right there. Okay, okay so what Caden found out, and we already talked about it, but this is the black that we're doing first. And then you do the chrome over that. And the chrome paint we are using is from Home Depot. It's called Metallic Finish Fashion ba -da -ba -doo. <laughs> But on the back it says Bright Coat Chrome. So that's how we knew. And this is what the cap looks like. So it's been a couple minutes uh, drying in the sun. And uh, right now I'm going to uh, lay down the chrome. I already uh, shaked out of this one. So uh, we're gonna lay down uh, one layer of chrome. And 
and let that dry. And as you can see, it took out that fish eye from the black primer. And one more light coat on after this dries in a couple minutes and uh, we'll be right back. All right guys, uh, so I put another quick uh, coat down with the chrome, just a couple sprays. So after we cut it off, we're sanding it flat. But that piece came off really easy. It wasn't bad. Well, all of them besides one painted because we I ruined one of them. So we're gonna have to use one off of Garanda. And before I take one off and cut one up on Garanda, we're gonna see, we're gonna try molding these first and see how it looks. That way I don't accidentally ruin a light uh, because these are an extra set that I have. So from what I watched online, I told heat gun, and then I was also, and then they also said like you have to get it pretty dang hot, and then use a he was using a flathead screwdriver to kind of press it around. So yeah, we're gonna give that a shot. attempt was a bust um yeah so we went rewatch that video and we needed clamps we went and got some clamps that way you can hold it down on one side while you form it and we're gonna see if this works better this was but me and Caden are now back to that place I mentioned earlier the Forester graveyard because we've broken too many lights now now we need another one and this dude's the plug also ride height kind of gas he said he's got five more SFs got five more that's what he said yeah. five more SG SF SF last time I was here there was three or four in the backyard and one in the garage this is insane okay so we actually took we didn't film and we just took time to figure out how to make these we actually have a few done so this is a finished one we still have to paint around the edges so you'll, you'll do like a quarter inch paint line around the edge just to block off where the old lens used to mount everybody does that when they make clears but that's a finished one and those two big ones are finished as well so onto the last light what we figured out is we're preheating the oven to 300 degrees you put it in the oven until it's nice and soft and then you lay it over the light and then take a clamp to the corners so you get the basic shape of the light and then you use a heat gun and form the edges. And then that's very a very delicate process as well. But that's the best set of steps that we have figured out that makes it work the best. So we're, this is the last piece. Hello. We're just gonna try it on a time lapse, I guess, and see how it goes. So then after it's out of the oven and just basic shape clamped on. Heat gun time. Normally, so you heat it for about a minute until it's nice and movable, and I'll show you what that looks like. And then you have to hold it until it cools so it stays shaped. Let's see. So once it dries, it actually forms. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna actually just use your an oven mitt because it gets really hot. And you're gonna get the basic shape all the way around. And once you have a basic shape, we'll go back through and reheat everything and use a screwdriver to really get the edges nice. And we'll show you what that looks like once we have all the sides and the basic shape all done. We have the basic shape formed around. What we're gonna do is you reheat all the places that aren't really going down all the way, and you'll take a flat head and press and get it and fold them around the edges nice. And it, it is time consuming, but I promise you're gonna want to do this portion because it'll make it that much nicer. Okay, so we're just getting this nice and hot real quick. And you'll just 
bend it around, gives you a nice edge. You'll hold it there until it dries while your hands are burning. But that just gives you that much of a nicer edge. And you'll go around the whole thing and do that. And it's worth it to do this. It makes it so much better. But yes, my hands burning. You just want to tuck it right around the edge. And that way you can trim. We're ready for trim. We're ready for trim. And we're ready for John to eat some Easy Mac. You ready to eat some Easy Mac? Why? Yeah. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> also, when you're forming the lens, be very, very, very careful to not heat the middle or put your hand on the middle because that'll deform the middle and make it look like crap. And there's really no way to fix that. You only want to heat and form the edges and that is it. Hello everybody, it's your boy John, AKA Fiat. We have, uh, I don't know if you can see, the bean is is over there. Uh, we're, we're helping Mr. Mr. Clean, Max Kelson. Take 18, bro. Take 18. What are we helping you with? I'm trying to tape the light. The I light. forgot, I did, put the other light already on the car, so I'm trying to use a photo to match the tape line, the paint line, and I'm nervous that it's going to look like it. He's, he's nervous, but it's looking good so far. I don't know, fam. It's so looking, it's looking man, good. What are we thinking, Caden? Knowing Max, one little, one little line, one little divot in the, like, the paint, you know, we're going to have to redo it. He's that type of person that we're going to have to do it. One I little... ain't half-assing this, bro. This is one of the world. I ain't got half-assing this, bro. And this guy over here is just fidgeting with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the corner. Like in the corner. Leave him alone, bro. He's chilling. So we finally have all the lights completed and in. And we just had a huge rainstorm last night. And none of them are fogging up. I am so stoked about that. Lots more work left to do on the car to get it ready for Scrape Fest, but that is where we're going in today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace out.